What is up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Good to see you again. We're live in the studio, risking our lives for your visual and oral benefit here, I think, is what we're doing. And I'm, I'm really just glad to be here because a lot of people have been missing out on the conversations we've been having on Clubhouse. You know where my heart is. My heart is here with you on YouTube. Okay, what are we doing? Jocelyn McDonald's here. She's my guest today. She flew in from Seattle just to do this with us, which I feel really blessed to be doing with her. She's going to be talking about the five gamification tips and tricks and strategies to understand or hack into the LinkedIn algorithm. That's what we're doing. Jocelyn, happy to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Happy to be talking about LinkedIn. And um, LinkedIn's a great place to be. So as you say yeah i mean this is well overdue well tell us a little about you and your background yeah yeah absolutely so um i am a salesperson by nature um i definitely have brand and marketing and advertising experience but i'm a salesperson at heart um i've been in sales for about 15 years and um you know when covid hit i spent i've spent months thinking about the future of sales and what that means and i think we are definitely seeing people go to linkedin to help them figure out solve their problems how to continue to grow their networks and connect with people where else are you going to go yeah well for a lot of people in the creative community you might hear the word sales what does the sales people do like pre-covid what the heck did you do give us a little slice of how you do sales sure so I will start by saying selling creative was my most blessed favorite thing to do. Um, I love design. I love, there we go. Yeah. Um, I love, I think just being a part of the creative process is just a blessing. So um, how I chose to connect with people would be um, always on LinkedIn first. Um, okay. Did a lot of landscaping. Um, but over time, I mean, I built my repertoire, my Rolodex, if you will, because we talk about being OGs, so I have the Rolodex, right? But um, like being in advertising, I mean, you are hustling, building that list of connections. And, um, you know, I don't look at them just as connections. If you're a true salesperson, I think everyone that you make a connection with, they become or you hope to um, make them into your friends. So uh, that's what makes sales so fun to me is you just build your family and um, you know if you have a product or a service that helps solve a problem for someone, um, that's a, it's a great feeling to be able to help someone out. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds to me, just to kind of distill that down a little bit, you do social prospecting on LinkedIn, you connect with people and you try to build a meaningful relationship with them mm -hmm. and to help them in their business and in their life, something like that, right? Something like that, Okay. Yep. So how do you build a genuine relationship when you actually want something from <clears throat> them? You ultimately want to sell them some creative services, right? Yeah. How do you do that? Well, it takes time. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just show up and say, hey, I have a product, I have a service, you need this. Um, most people don't need your product. Um, and some people don't have time to think about your product. So it's, I mean, really, it seems so silly, but spending a lot of time just introducing yourself. And if you can go the extra mile um, and offer something for free, um, you know, something we'll talk about a little later, you know, educate, inspire, or entertain. I mean, we spend so many hours behind the desk. desk. If you can just offer something to someone that's of value, um, that makes them laugh or do something creative and they actually are okay with and then eventually enjoy seeing you come back, then you're building a relationship that could, um, you know, be a business relationship down the road. Is that one of your secret tips as a salesperson? I noticed that you send me weird pictures <laughs> and awkward expressions and gifts and all that kind of stuff. You, you, you are letting some of your personality come through in the communication. Is yeah. that one of your things? It is, it is because I feel like we are all human and we, I think it's really important to share your personality and who you are i mean we just get so locked behind this professional um veil and i think it's nice when people can actually see you have a humorous side you have a creative side you're respectfully um you know aggressive but you know again respectful 
you know, so. Respectfully aggressive. We'll have to dig into that a little Let's bit later. Let's do it. Okay, well, a lot has changed in the world since COVID hit and the global pandemic and all. So fewer phone calls, no face-to-face -face meetings. So you've been using LinkedIn this last year and maybe you're gonna share some of that with us today, right? I would love to. So you prepared, I think, a 30 minute presentation ish. Ish. And we'll, we'll just, let's just jump into it. Then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's, do, let's it. do it. First, I wanted to share just a little, some little facts um, about LinkedIn. So LinkedIn has about 722 million users. And that's an interesting number because although Instagram has about 1 billion and Facebook has about almost triple that. LinkedIn is smaller, but the fact that there is a group, a large group of people that have decided to, to be there and um, say, this is important to my business, they all have similar interests, that is of unique value. Um, LinkedIn is also has 33 offices around the globe. It's offered in 24 languages. And as luck would have it, this May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, will be their 18th birthday. So as we're all enjoying our margaritas and um you know celebrating it's happy birthday for linkedin so mm, special years. year wow yeah so um you know just thinking about the last 12 months with covid um we've certainly seen a rise 55 percent um increase in conversations amongst users online and 60 percent in content creation so people really took to the linkedin platform they're creating more content they're sharing they're having more conversations and we also saw that with linkedin lives there was 437 percent increase in linkedin lives and you know so many of us have been on so many different calls it's we almost all of us feel like we're experts in Zooms and Google Meets and um, go to meetings you know why not try a LinkedIn live you know with your team so um, yeah I would encourage people to do that mm. even though LinkedIn lives are not um, necessarily um, skewing as powerfully as a native video on LinkedIn I still think it's a great tool it's new it will continue to grow and it's just another way to create unique um, content on LinkedIn. So try it. 15% um, content uh, impression. So people who are looking at content online, it's 15% more impressions on content than job postings. It used to be that we were on LinkedIn just for our resume. But no, people are going there for their news. Um, people are going there to make connections. People are going there to see something. I know for me, I love seeing um, design. I love seeing art. I mean, there used to be very little of that. And now I find that designers, creatives are being a lot more open about sharing their work. And I love to see it on LinkedIn. Creates. Same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Makes LinkedIn such a, such a cooler, more, you know, sexy place. I, if I can say that, you okay. know, you can say that. Yeah. It's colorful. What I think is really interesting that's happening with LinkedIn is organic reach is really high. And that, as a content creator, I want to be rewarded for my efforts. If I make something, I want people to see it. That's the Absolutely. whole point. And we've noticed that Facebook is pretty lame when it comes to organic reach. And they want you to pay to play. You mm -hmm. have to pay and boost things for people to see it. And I, I think it's a different model. And I, I love how LinkedIn is kind of coming as the third horse in this three horse race. And really letting the algorithm reach people that are interested in your content without having them necessarily follow you. So miraculously seemingly overnight i've been able to grow a pretty decent sized following and not even realize it just by releasing content now i understand why also it's getting a little harder for the for me to get the same organic reach i used to because covid hit and now everybody's on linkedin whereas fewer content creators were making stuff on linkedin before yeah yep yeah yep i mean even some of that is interesting because um you know linkedin is being seen as the most trusted major platform social media platform i think it's like 73 percent they're about say um you know most users say 73 percent of users say they trust um their data and um their their uh, privacy with linkedin um, over facebook and instagram i know there's been kind of a mass exodus off of facebook and some instagram um, but the fact that linkedin is able to retain that trust with their users i think is really important mm -hmm. so so I think it's important to kind of start from a place of 
kind of reverse engineering why the algorithm um, works the way it does. So LinkedIn really does want to sell LinkedIn ads and premium accounts. That's how they make their money. So the more content, the more reach a post has, the more opportunities they have to sell ads for premium accounts and LinkedIn ads. So if we understand that, it makes it a little bit more easy to understand how to kind of gamify your reach. Um, I think before we kind of get into it, we also need to kind of uh, discuss social selling index, what that means. Have you ever heard of that, Chris? I heard about it because you shared it with me. Right. Other than that, I have no <laughs> idea what that is. So social selling index is kind of um, a, a system, a metric system that LinkedIn put together so people can um, kind of have a, a little bit of a way to judge um, whether the strength of their profile. Um, so a social selling index is really broken down into four parts. It's really your personal brand, uh, your brand audience, your engagement and how you're the relationships you're making inside those communities that you're building in LinkedIn. So your brand, it's like, what stories are you telling? Um, are you um, stick? Have you chosen some keywords that really speak to who you are online? Um, have you used them in the descriptions for yourself and your profile? And have you been thoughtful in with your connections or when you got on LinkedIn, did you just blanket connect with everyone? It's really important to kind of define your audience, understand who you're trying to target, what your messaging is, so that you can understand, you know, what groups you wanna follow. And once you are in those audiences, you can engage with them. And that's also very important to the algorithm. And then are you making relationships, key relationships with the decision makers in your audiences? Do you find that you use it that way? Yeah, sort of organically. Yeah, I don't, I'm not as methodical about it as you're describing. So part of my social selling index it has something to do with my profile. That's one part of it, right? Mm -hmm. And the kind of content and the consistency in which I'm producing. So is there a score somewhere where I can look this up? There is. Where is it? So if you Google, and it's just as easy as that, if you Google social selling index on LinkedIn, you will find a link provided by LinkedIn. Um, make sure it's the link provided by LinkedIn and you can go there and you can find your score for free. Okay. And there you will be able to see kind of those four metrics we just went over. Yeah. And it'll show you the areas in which you're kind of deficient. Mm. So Jonah, can we look up Jocelyn to see how she's doing and put up my stats compared to hers? I'm not making this like a competition or anything. I'm just curious how we're all doing because I've never even looked it up. I don't think you can. I can't? I don't know. Can you look up my social selling index? Only you can see your own SSI? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, Jonah, look up yours. It'll be terrible. I'm sure of it. Okay, let's keep going then. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so the other component to your reach on LinkedIn is your profile. And LinkedIn does ju judge your profile strength by beginner, intermediate, and all-star. So if you're just getting started, no problem. Make sure that your profile is fully built out. Um, that's going to kind of boost your strength. And I think LinkedIn does a really great job of coaching you through the ways to do that. It'll cue you into the areas of like, you know, have you done your description? Have you, um, you know, bolstered all of your experiences? Um, and then, you know, when you, when you're full there, you can work on like your skills and people will start to endorse you and, and maybe you'll have some recommendations that people can offer you. And at the end of the day, hopefully you're striving for an all-star. So together, if your social selling index is anywhere between like 75 and above, you're doing really well. And if you have a, a all-star profile, then you are doing very well. So with those together, that will help your reach in your content go as far as it can, as long as we get into the essentials that mm -hmm. will also help. I assume you're an all-star. I am. I am too. Awesome. You know what they say, game recognizes game. <laughs> all-star recognizes all-star. Okay. Eyes are rolling right now. <laughs> You'll have to share mine. You, you show yours with me later. Yes, I'm looking up my social selling index right now. Excellent. Ooh, get your score, yes. So, do you wanna share it before we go? Well, I have to find it first. 
Whoa. Pull up yours. I'll show you my stats if you show me yours. I actually was not so, I don't even have my phone here. On your body, on your person? It's over there, yeah. Go get it, it's fine. (laughs) Come on, let's go get it, it's fine. It's a live show. Yeah, it's happening, it's live. It's it's happening. Ooh, dang. This is where okay, it gets really ugly. What score do I need to have ugly. above what? 76. Oh. You got to just search it on Google, man. Social Selling Index. It'll pop right up if you search it on Google. And then you click on a link and it'll, it'll bring it up. So on the count of three, when you're ready, we'll, sh- we'll flash it on screen and we'll oh, show. Oh, God. Come okay. on, Joss. I'm ready. You're the LinkedIn pro. Okay, ready? One, two. Do I go that screen? No, you go to the camera. Okay, so they sweet. can see it. Ready? One, two, three. So you have I don't 76. See yours. You're well, such a I'm cheater. Gonna sh- I'm going to show you mine. I wanted to see your scores on the top. Oh, no. Do the, ma- the no. big circle. Well, no. Tell me your score on the top. Oh, okay. Ooh. So, okay. Mine says I'm top 1% in industry SSI rank, top 5% in network SSI rank. You beat me there. You're, you're what? What's your score? Foot, foot five. What's your score? I don't know. What's your score? No, no I'm... <laughs> Your top two scores, the top two things I just... Mine uh, is 1% in SSI. Yes. And top 2% so for your, network rank. I got I got some work to do. It's okay. 10% and 50%. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine yours would be. There we go, Ricky. Okay, so my current social selling index is 71. Okay. 71. Mine is 76. So you, you got me by five points there. So I guess I'm listening to you from here on out. Okay, you got me. Okay. Okay, keep going. All right. So now we're going to get into the, just the bones of a complete profile. And this is, we're starting off really easy, folks. Um, make sure that you have a professional profile picture. Please don't put you where you, we look really cute at our cousin's wedding, um, your hands over someone. I'm, I'm just not a big fan. But if you can find, you know, a nice picture of yourself that's, you know, just you. (laughs) And um, if you are savvy enough to use an app like Canva to take out the background or, or something else, I'm not a designer by nature. Um, I I love, I know, I know. I love to think I am, but yeah, Photoshop is great too. But for those of us who are not, you know, creatives, um, if you can take out a background, it makes such a difference. You know, there's, there's a, a website you can go to remove bg remove background it'll really? just do it for you automatically yeah that's so great oh yeah use yeah. the software so anyway a, a profile picture is that's your first handshake so please reconsider your profile picture um your background you know there's a lot of backgrounds that linkedin offers um that are great but um if you have skills and the ability to do one that complements your job title um your role, your business. I think it's always nice to see those. And I'm seeing more and more now that people are getting really creative. Have you, haven't you seen that too, Chris? What's with that? Their backgrounds. Sorry. People are getting kind of creative with their backgrounds. Oh, behind them? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I don't that, really like, pay header? attention. I just, oh, the header. Yeah, on LinkedIn oh, profiles. Okay. Yeah, I guess I've seen some that are really nice. Yeah. 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 Um, so the about section, the about section is an area that often changes. I play with mine all the time. This isn't like a Ron Popeil set it and forget it type yeah. of deal. You can play with it. Um, but this is an area where I would spend some time to think about three to five keywords, right? We've, I've mentioned it once before, but like, who are you? What, what are you, why are you using LinkedIn? What are your goals? So for me, my keywords are social selling, marketing, brand, sales, um, remote sales. Um, Anytime you can use your keywords in your about section, your job descriptions. I know a lot of us have like a very, you know, diverse job history. If if you have, you know, you've worked in a restaurant, you've worked in a factory, and maybe you don't necessarily have a very, what you perceive to be cohesive um, storyline, you can make one. It's, it's all about your story, right? Just find your story, find your keywords. And then once you find your keywords in LinkedIn, choose those as your hashtags. Oh. That's what I do. What are your hashtags? Social selling, branding, 
marketing. But I mean, I have more too, because your hashtags will dial in your feed. So I love to see design and art, so or, or 3D, right? So I have other things outside of my, but that's how the algorithm, you know, will put things in front of you. I see. Yeah. I'm not using hashtags like that. Okay, mm -hmm. noted. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the nice thing too, is like every, everyone uses LinkedIn how they want to use it, you know? So this just may be my flavor. Um, feature content. So uh, you might think, gosh, I don't have any content. I'm not quite sure. I, don't, I haven't done anything. I don't make anything. If there's something that you think is a story that is really cool to you, um, it doesn't necessarily even have to be your work. Um, and if you have questions, you can, you can send me a question on LinkedIn about featured content. But pin something there that you feel like is relevant to your industry. Um, I mean, oftentimes people are just looking through your profile to see like what you're all about. And so if you don't have something that you're, you've done, like maybe you haven't, you know, been in fancy videos or like run any <laughs> awards or, but you're, you're really into 3D art and you want to pin some pieces, pieces that you think are really cool, um, go for it, you know? Um, make sure that your experience descriptions tell a really nice story about the things you've done in each place. If you have, um, you know, awards or um, accolades that you've experienced in those places, I would put those in there. Do you have anything to add there? No. Okay. Um, skills and endorsements. Skills. Skills are just saying these are this is these are the things I do for my my, you know my current job, but also even things you've done and you're not necessarily doing now, like what are your skills? What is, what's in your toolbox? And then people can endorse you for it. I feel like back in the day, and this could just be my experience, I feel like people used to endorse me more. I don't feel like I get so many endorsements anymore. Maybe I'm not doing a very good job anymore. I'm just kidding. But you run out of people to endorse you. That's the problem. I just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But, um, it's always cool when people endorse you for your skills, but um, recommendations, we can talk about recommendations later at another time if people are interested. I have some tricks on how to get more recommendations. This is where you know people write something for you and they say, this is my experience working with Chris, but people are really busy yeah. and it takes a lot of time. So if you can help them with that, um, we can talk about how to do that really simply and easily. And I think that would be so helpful for people. Yeah. Um, accomplishments, you know, again, if you've had things in your past that are um, things of note, add that to your profile, just make it rich. And then at the very bottom in your interest section, you've got influencers you follow, companies you follow, groups that you're in on LinkedIn, people, um, sorry, schools that you follow. So. Is it unusual for me to want to pull up my phone right now and work on my LinkedIn profile while you're talking? No. Oh, okay. That's I what I'm told idea. you. This you're is, making me. This is cool stuff. I gotta, I gotta catch up to you. Yeah, this problem. is cool stuff. What's that, Ricky? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on my profile <laughs> while we're talking here. I might need to have a conversation with you, though, Ricky. <laughs> okay. Keep going. Okay. So now the second essential for gamifying your the algorithm is contributing and we had already kind of talked about it uh once before but um stealing from you chris honestly educate inspire entertain you know gosh so many people are on there just saying this is what we do this is how we do it and no one really cares right what we're here to do is build trust and rapport and friendship and networks and if you lead with your heart and you know you lead with an, a loving place people will follow people you will you will magnetize people to you so educate inspire and enter, entertain um create native content so chris and i have talked a lot about this um creating native content when we talk about this is if you, like many of us do, and it's a great thing that you have it, but if you have like videos or anything on another platform, living somewhere, Vimeo, YouTube, LinkedIn doesn't want you to send traffic away from their platform because they're trying to keep you there. And if you're taking, you know, traction away from their platform, that's not helping them uh, put their ads 
in front of new eyes. So if you have a link that you want to share with other people, which is a great thing, there's two ways I know that I do it. And I think, Chris, you don't worry so much about this. You just kind of do it, which is fine too. There's no right or wrong. It's just your preference. Um, but put the link in the top comment, um, the first comment. You can do that. Or you can edit it. Go So you can post your um, posting and then go in and drop, when it's edited, drop your link in the edited version and repost it. So if people, just to be clear, post your, post your post and then drop the link in when you go in and re-edit that post. You're saying do not embed a link, an outbound link inside your original post because LinkedIn, LinkedIn is going to flag that and say, look, we don't like it. that. Yep. So then the hack, the gamification part you're yep. talking about, go ahead and make your posts and then go back and edit and then just drop the link back in. Yeah. Have you run A-B tests to see what impact this has? I'm just curious. You know, I haven't yet, mm -hmm. but what I was going to talk to you about is I think it's just fine to put it in that first comment, but as your reach grows, what happens? It gets buried. Yeah, it gets buried. So, and also, I don't, again, I don't think it's wrong to put it in that first comment because a lot of us are just learning, so it's fine. But if you put it in that first comment, let your viewers know that the link is in that first comment. All too often, people come to your post later and it's, it's there, but they don't realize it. So let them know where it is. Yeah, make them work for a little bit. Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay. But again, we're all so busy. That's true. So, um, so be consistent in po posting. We'll get back to that in a second. But LinkedIn is a community. It's not like it, it doesn't care if you're there or not. It really does care if you're there because if you're there, you are and you're putting out content, people are viewing it and that's good. But if you're not consistent, if you don't give to it, it won't give back to you. It is a community. So if you're not a community person, if you don't like engaging in things, I'm not sure if LinkedIn's really going to be for you. You have to work it. Like all things. Like all things. If, if it's worth having, it's worth working for. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And time of day. It really does matter. So we'll talk about that. Okay. Yeah. So time of day uh, between 8 and 10 a.m. really on any day is the best day, but there is an ideal day and it happens to be Tuesday for LinkedIn. And Saturdays and Sundays are also really great days. But Tuesday is the best day, Monday through Friday. Um, but I know I'm on LinkedIn on Saturday. Are you on Saturday and Sunday? I am. But I thought uh, about that. Since it's a work site, I yeah. was just thinking, am I promoting people working on the weekend if I post content? What's That's wrong with me? That's interesting, yeah. You know, I think about that a lot. Oh, of course. Yeah. That yeah. doesn't stop me from putting out content on a weekend. Yeah. I go there because I just love to see like the designers I follow. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, the fourth es essential is when you post content, you have got to engage with it. So if someone says, oh, great, great point. I love what you just said. You need to react to it. And when I say react to it, that would be like the equivalent of quote unquote, liking it, but we have reacting reaction buttons on LinkedIn and there is a choice. So the newer one, um, just offhand is support. And apparently that support button, um, gives a little bit more of a, a reach. It's weighted heavy, heavier a than a little the bit. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and don't just react comment, leave a comment. So when someone says, Oh, I love this. It's you know, it's great, blah, blah, blah. Give a reaction button and a comment. It pushes it further. Um, and I used to not do this, but it really does make a difference. It's okay to like your own posts. So when you react to it, you're supposed to react to it as well. Is I that know. like the equivalent of me standing in the mirror like, hey, you, who's sexy? <laughs> yeah, kind really? of. Really? It's okay to like your own stuff? I guess so. Yeah, so go for it. <laughs> Scratch your own back, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's a little bit more than scratching your own back, but yes. Yeah, okay. right? Um, <laughs> okay. 24 hours, um, give, you have to be engaging in that first 24 hour period. It's really important. Um, and then if you love something that someone else, uh, you know, like if you want to create content on LinkedIn, they want it again to be native. They want it to be yours. 
original content is always more powerful. So a reshare, like taking someone else's content and putting it out there, it's not going to help you as much. So what you're talking about is when you reshare a native post on LinkedIn, the reach is not so hot. That's and correct. I've seen that. So I'll see something like, oh, 50 people reshared your post. I'm like, wonderful. And then I go and thank them or like and comment on their reshare. And I see, well, I'm the first person commenting on this. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So you guys just need to know that. So there's a hack around this. Did you know the hack? No, tell me. Oh my gosh, I thought you were the- I don't know. Maybe I do. The queen. Tell me. Okay. Here's what I've been told. Yeah. If you like a post and you really, really like it, what you should do is you should screen capture it and post oh, yeah. the screen capture as a reshare, you're, you're gonna post it so it feels like it's new native content. Yeah. And you may want to copy and paste original text in there and then add the link back to that original one in the comment. Yeah. And that's how you really honor and help people that you really admire the content. You, you may notice when you go and reshare content, the reach is horrific, it's horrible because they don't want people to do that. Yeah. It's too easy. Yeah, I, I had heard of that. I have not done that because I wasn't sure how I felt about screen capturing it. But if you do it right way, the right way, like you just said, if you treat it respectfully and, you know, do the... Um, Link back to it. Exactly. And mention them and all and that kind of stuff. Them. And that's, yep. I think that's fine. I what I'm too. seeing also on LinkedIn, I'm not sure how I feel about this, but there are people who literally will grab my carousels from Instagram and then repost on LinkedIn. Yeah. And they do mention you, but it's like, you didn't even ask. Mm -hmm. You didn't ask, and I don't know how I feel about it, but whatever. So I'm not sure that LinkedIn likes that either, and I'll tell you why. Why? Because the Google algorithm is attached to that. So, but if they're screen capturing it, probably not if they're screen capturing it, but if you lift um, type, copy, straight from like a website, and you put that on LinkedIn, um, LinkedIn knows that it's from some other place and it will also flag it. Especially if it's got bold or italics in it. Yeah. It doesn't like that either from oh, some okay. other site. Because it's copying the styling yeah. from something and it, it transfers it over. Yeah. Because you can't, I guess you can do it in a native post, can't you? What's that? Can you style your text in LinkedIn? Are you, can you bold and italic your type? Gosh, it's been a long time since I've done that. Yeah, same here. Okay, we'll have to look into it after the show. Yeah, I don't think you can. But yeah, yeah it's been a long time, so we'll have to look into it. Um, but I know that you can't like underline because I've tried to do that before. But anyway, but you know, like when you grab something from Google some, or like in a text, it'll say pasting something, something from Google. Yep. Or from, yeah. Yep. So, um, okay. So the fifth is we're talking about cadence. This is kind of, uh, this is interesting because you get to play with this. This is a personal thing. So some people say more posts, the better. And the research that I've kind of come across says not necessarily true. So LinkedIn is going to more heavily weight your first post of the day. And it wants to see how you perform as a content creator on LinkedIn. So it's going to let it go. It's going to kind of test your reach, see who engages. And if you put a second post out on a day, it's going to weigh your second post against the first. And it kind of uh, does a little bit of a disservice. So I would say, wait, don't be too eager to just put all kinds of content twice a day. Wait to see how it performs. And then when you see that the reach um, you know, some people say because of that, like twice a week is fine. Um, I do like around three times a week or four times a week. Um, but other people say when you see an obvious drop in engagement, go ahead and post again. But for me, and I think for you too, Chris, I don't watch it that closely. I just enjoy the platform. So if I feel like I have something to share, it's not all about just the gamifying it for me. If I have something to share, I'll share it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why, you know, I just wanted to say, have fun with it. Don't get too rigid. If you have something to share, if it's valuable, if it's relevant, if it's going to help, if it's going to inspire, educate, or entertain, share it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that wraps it for me. Oh, that was the whole presentation? That's the whole presentation. Oh, it just flew by in like in a second. Yeah. Okay. So what do we do now? Well, we can now work on Ricky's profile. That's going to take too long. How much time do we have here? 
you know so why don't we do this jonah can or ricky can you highlight some comments so we can maybe address some questions in semi real time although audio and video are not in sync i'm gonna jump on youtube right now i'm not texting my friends about whatever i'm i'm actually working here guys so let's get into the comments here there is okay where is it all right okay thank you ricky for helping me out there the question for you is do you create themes or categories to post and if so at which interval monthly weekly good question this is from eric moore, eric moore. thank you yeah you can totally create themes um so i don't know if necessarily it's supposed to be used like this but i use unum um, it's just a tool to help you basically plan for your Instagram feed. It doesn't automatically post it, but you can plan for it. And I pay for that service and you can create multiple boards and I use it for LinkedIn too. Um, so I, I totally create themes and um, I do that ahead of time. Um, yeah, great, great question. So smart. Okay. Next question. Here we go. Do I reach out to recruiters or how can I get recruited? Good question. Who's that from? Oh, okay. Ricky just made it up. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, I would say LinkedIn does a good job of kind of f allowing a service to, to flag you as being open to um, employment. So <clears throat> if you go into your settings, you can elect to put open to work. Um, there's a couple different ways to do it that I know of. Um, you can toggle the switch saying I'm open to work or you can put a frame around it. It provides it for you, but you can put a frame around your profile picture, also visually flagging you that you're open to work. And that's really nice, um, especially if you're a freelancer and you want to be always on and available for work opportunities. Um, so yeah, that, that's a great service. I think that LinkedIn Pride is unique to the platform. So. Great. There's a question here from Nathan Buxton, who's asking this question. I've wondered this too. Yeah. Do you get a lot of requests to connect on LinkedIn? How do you manage these things? How do you stay on top of all the oh, invitations? Yeah. yeah. What's your What's your strategy on that? Yeah. So I do get a lot of connections requests, and for the most part, I'll accept it because I do, and I'm not like a hoarder. I don't. It's like, it's not like oh, more the better. Um, more and more now people are looking at linkedin um as a way to kind of um i'm just thinking about safety here folks so like sometimes i think there are scammers right and i know that i've definitely been a target of some of those so just be careful who you let into your network if it doesn't seem right if it doesn't feel right um let it go and what they're do you not do when you say let it go just i say i don't know this person you just decline it decline yeah. that's all you do yeah yeah, and I mean, otherwise, um, I do, I accept it, and it's mostly just people wanting to connect, and usually if they, they want to ask me something, or, um, you know, when people connect, if they have a reason, they'll follow up again. Yeah. So if they're there for a specific reason, and they want to nurture that connection, you'll hear from them again. What's an automatic no for you and a decline? What do they do to get an automatic decline from you? Oh my gosh, I could go in a lot of different directions with that one. <laughs> um, an automatic no for me. Why don't we do this? You do one, I'll do one. We'll ping, uh, okay. ping back and forth, yeah? Okay. Well, as a female, I'll say I don't appreciate when people get too personal with me. Um, so that would be an automatic decline. Can you give us an example? I think that people can get a little personal. Like, I mean, you can... <laughs> you can just guess. I mean, there's a lot of kind of like slimy people. There's creepers on okay. Facebook. There's creepers on, you know, you just got to be aware. I'm, I'm a bald Asian man. I don't get the creepers. So I, I but am in assuming, your way you do. I'm assuming they're going to make some kind of remark about the way you look. Sure. Okay. That's a no. See, That's we can talk no. about it in a safe way. Yeah. Right. And you can block people. Just, I yeah. think it's important for people to know that I, I do have people blocked use that service yeah and they won't know they're blocked they just yeah right so i would suggest that for any man you need to be aware that you should not begin a conversation talking about someone's physical appearance that's a definite no-no definitely on linkedin almost everywhere else and you have to understand that that women are sometimes the subject of unwanted advances from people and is super unkosher not cool at all 
cut it out, guys. Cut it out. Yeah, I think it's important to touch on it. It's not like the most comfortable topic, but it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, And so an immediate no for me in that same genre would be like, hey, what are you up to? Like not business related. I just know where it's probably going. So that's an immediate no. Yeah. Oh, are they are they using LinkedIn like Tinder? I have no idea because I've never used Tinder, but <laughs> but who well, knows? And you know, I the don't want to know. Street. Hey, but we're both happily married, so yeah, well, nobody here is <laughs> using Tinder. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've heard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for me, I don't like the one that says LinkedIn suggests that we should be connected. I just I'm done with you. Super impersonal. Oh, yeah. That's so just what? for me though. Not for me though. Yeah. How come? Or maybe I'm a weirdo. I don't know. I'm leaning into the algorithm, you know? Really? But if they're like, we should, you know, I just know how hard I tried to build my network when I first came to LinkedIn. And when you're new, sometimes you don't know what to say. And if, you know, especially after this last, you know, 12 mm. months, I know I've said that before because I didn't, I didn't know any better. So it kind of reminds me of who I was like eight years ago, just trying so hard. And I'm like, okay. And if I'll let it go, right? It's not the best intro, but like if I hear from them again, which I usually don't, um, I'll listen, but usually I don't hear from them again. So they're just trying to grow their network for whatever reason. But you know, I accept them. Yeah, okay, so you have your creepers. My creepers are people who just wanna sell me some crazy thing. Complete. Who want a job, who wanna ask me the meaning of life in in 13 paragraphs and I, I don't have time for that. So generally speaking, it's an auto decline for me if you reach out to me and you use that generic a LinkedIn thinks we're connected or I'm looking for business thought leaders in this space and it's all garbage. I know it's a robot. Mm-hmm. I just hit decline. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, I have about uh, almost 5,000 people have sent me requests and I just, I'm, I've just stopped responding to them. Yeah. The ones I do respond to just to put a positive on a negative, which is you write me two sentences that tells me you're a human being and why you think we should talk. It doesn't even matter. I'm a fan. I watch this video. That last post you made was awesome. Or, hey, you know, I have a bone to pick with you. If I think you're a human being, I will accept. If I don't, I just put you in the garbage pile. I mean, you're a good human. I'm just saying, I'm just declining your thing in the garbage. That's all. Yeah. And I'm so glad you brought up bots because it's a it's a thing it is a thing so much so much more now than it ever has before and so part of the reason why um i prefer people to call me joss you know um is like this is a test for bots so in your linkedin profile my name's jocelyn and i put in parentheses joss mcdonald because you know friends and people who know me and work with me they call me joss but if it's a bot, oftentimes when they reach out, they'll say, hey, Jocelyn, quote, like parentheses, Joss, you know. And so if it's a person, they know I prefer to be called Joss because that's what I indicated on my profile or if they're a savvy enough person to notice that. But oftentimes it's just a bot. So if you have a nickname and you want to filter out some of those, that's a little hint is to put your nickname in the profile. Yeah. Okay. So you're probably staying on top of LinkedIn in ways that I'm not. So my backlog of connections, it's gotten out of control. I don't want to deal with it anymore. And so there was a point in which I was just select all, accept all. And Mm. then there's all these marketers coming into my thing. And if the first piece of correspondence, this is my rule. If your first piece of correspondence with me is trying to pitch and sell me something, I will block you. For sure. I will literally block you. I'm not even just decline. I will block you Mm because it takes extra steps to do that. Yeah. Yep. And when you have so many of those, it just wastes your time and it, yeah. it's clogs up your communication and waste your time. Yeah, absolutely. I wish here's the feature request LinkedIn people. Can we just make it a little easier to block people? I don't want to go through two steps. Just give me the auto block button. Yeah. I have a request for LinkedIn too. Oh, you do? Yes. Okay. I wish that the note that was attached to in asking for an acceptance of an invite or a connect I wish that note didn't go straight into my inbox when I accept Same. it. Because I've already read it or I don't care enough to read it. I've just accepted it, so job done. Yeah. I don't know who came up with that, but it's not. Bad super UI, great. UX experience right there. there and what go. we're talking about is so, for example, Joss and I will accept 100 
uh, connections in a moment and then you see a hundred tabs at the bottom popping up like you got a million inbox and now the legitimate messages that are new and relevant to you get buried in that thing and you literally have to go and click on each one of those to like deactivate it right mm -hmm. what a pain in the rear and i'll be really honest with you perhaps if we go into the settings i've i've thought but i haven't had time to do it but i will um maybe i can turn that off oh will you let us know i will okay yeah great so what else is uh what else can we talk about maybe we should do another question whoa we have a whole bunch of questions here <laughs> okay i think we just touched on some of the mistakes but are there other mistakes that people are making that you like don't do this why don't you take another question i'm gonna think about that because okay. i definitely probably can think of some okay here's another question then what's your advice for building relationships on linkedin when you are early in your career mm -hmm. good one so good so I would say building on one of the things you said, if you're gonna reach out to someone, that's your one time to reach out. This is your moment, your handshake moment. So don't, don't be cheesy. Maybe even like research best ways to reach out to people on LinkedIn. Come up with something that's original, heartfelt, meaningful, and it's gonna take more time, but have a message that's quick and to the point and respectful. Don't say, you know, I see we have similar contacts, you know. See? Same I thing. Oh, I know. You it's just said true. it was okay. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I guess it depends on what day you catch me. <laughs> and for me, <laughs> it doesn't matter what day just it is. Just cold heart. All that day is going straight in the garbage <laughs> bin. So it, I don't think you have to be super creative. I think you just say, I admire your work. I, I love that thing that you wrote. Just make something specific. Two sentences, that's all it takes. We're not trying to teach you about how to be Shakespeare here. Just just be human first. What the heck is your reason for connecting with this person? Give them a reason to accept and they will. So I work with a team of interns um, at a nonprofit called I Can Help. And I tell the interns, um, be creative. So LinkedIn provides you all different kinds of ways to send a note to people. And if you're in their network and you wanna message them, you can send a video. Um, we, a creative way for prospecting is I, I literally take my phone, I create a video, a very short, succinct video, and I'll send it with a little header statement, um, to that video. And it gets, you know, attention, especially from recruiters. Like if you're looking for recruiters and someone had a great question about, you know, should I reach out to recruiters? Absolutely, you should totally reach out to recruiters. Um, and if you do reach out to recruiters, really research and figure out a game plan that's gonna help you stand out from the crowd. So also, I know this sounds silly, but there's emojis you can use. Um, I mean, make it fun. You're like rolling your eyes right now, but it's no, just- I'm, I'm squinting in pain. <laughs> <laughs> no eyes rolled no it's totally fine but yeah. like if it's to if it's to your personality make it fun here's where i don't like the emojis and this is just me being stern asian dad here is it's a professional networking platform emojis are the language of teenagers like hey cute haha ha, you know whatever fruit that you're gonna throw up i just that's not for me I want to be seen and perceived as a professional who's trying to either get a job or to do business with you or to establish some kind of contact. I'm going to say this is where Joss and I disagree. Don't do the emojis. I don't, but I don't do emojis, period, generally speaking. Okay. But no, I chuckled just because it, it brought me back to um, kind of that fruit ninja emojis kind of spot. But um, yeah, I would say you, we have all seen the like, barfing of like emojis all over the place here and there i think it's okay just to mm -hmm. be eye-catching i think it's fine but i'm of the same boat like okay. do not yeah um and i maybe this is another eye roll because i know as a user of slack you know yeah. i i did like slack um but like there's gifs gifs however you say it yeah. the, i mean sometimes that really gives like someone a unique chuckle so yes. i've yeah. heard recruiters um you know tell me I really appreciate the people who have taken the time to appeal to what they think is personal and will connect with me in their notes. And that's why I gave them attention. Yeah. So I'm going to give you another tip. Uh, I think it was Nomi God who asked that question about advice for people who are trying to establish relationships in LinkedIn when they are still early in their career. 
okay, so we gave you advice on how to reach out to people, but there's one that's even more effective than that. I'm not a LinkedIn expert, but I'm gonna give you a little Christo hack here. When somebody's posting a piece of content, interact with that piece of content. Be consistent. Don't say, cool, rad bro, awesome share. That makes you disappear into the noise that exists already in social media. Write something thoughtful. Talk about something about the content that you read, how it impacted you, or something else that you're inspired by, and put that in the notes. I'm sorry, in the comments below the post. If you do this consistently enough, eventually, some idiot like me will see it and it's like, this person's really smart. And without even realizing it, I'll click on your profile and I'll say, oh, you sent me a, a, a connection request. I'll happily accept it because I know you're not a bot and mm -hmm. you're trying to build a relationship with me versus you got a timeshare you wanna to sell to me. So that's another great tip. So if you're reaching way above your weight class, like you're punching above your weight class, and there's a big influencer, an author, or a celebrity you wanna reach out to, engage with their content, be consistent about it, and eventually, I think if they're smart, they'll do what I do, which is they'll accept your uh, LinkedIn request afterwards. That was an awesome recommendation. Um, another one kind of along those lines, I would say if there's key people that you want to meet, chat with, connect, go to their profile once you're connected, go to their profile and see what groups they're in. You know, research the groups, um, research the uh, hashtags they've used, try and figure out what circles that they live in and then do what Chris just said, um, show up in those places again and again and that will give you this organic connection. Yes. It wasn't so organic. Here's another <laughs> uh, question or comment coming from Andrew T. Andrew T, what is up, buddy? Andrew T is like, hey, I, I thought if I copy and paste a quote that I want to share, I didn't need to ask for their permission. Let's talk about this a little bit, okay? You have to ask yourself a question. What is the purpose of you sharing a piece of content that's not authored by you? Is it done in the spirit of generosity or is it to try to hoard attention for yourself? Quotes are a little different because quotes are meant to be shared like that. And the best way to handle quotes is guess what? Put it in quotes, cite the person who said it, and that should be good enough. What I was talking about earlier was people taking content, designs, slides, carousels, diagrams, charts, whatever, illustrations, and just putting it on their feed without citing, without trying to honor the original content creator and taking it wholesale. There are a couple of LinkedIn accounts, one I know in particular, that they routinely go through my Instagram account, pull the entire deck out, and repost the thing on LinkedIn. Therefore, robbing my myself of the ability to post it myself, which I think kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. Because I have my own plan, my own content release schedule. It's kind of like you ripping a video from Netflix and dropping it on YouTube because you're so excited as a fan. That's where I think you want to ask for permission because what you're doing there, you're not just taking little bits, you're taking the whole thing. And my number two pet peeve, the mistakes that people make, this really bothers me. When people see a piece of content, I'm just speaking about me specifically, that I've written, that I've designed, and what they do is they take the same copy and they change the images and they do not reference or mention anywhere. And then they use the excuse of, I'm just practicing. You know, the difference between practicing and being a professional, practice happens in private. You don't go practicing piano on the concert stage. So saying and excusing yourself and saying, oh, I was just practicing, that's a, that's a cop out for ripping off, being lazy, and being too ashamed to reference the original post. My general rule is, if you wanna share my post, go and share the post, leave it intact, mention, credit, point back to the content, otherwise you're doing something different, and eventually, in the professional world, this stuff will catch up to you at some point. Absolutely, yep. And um, if you're interested, let us know if someone is stealing content or doing anything that you know is not a feel good, you can absolutely report them. So, yes, How do you sir? report them? Let's talk about it later. Why not now? Well, let's talk about it later. Okay. A little bit of a The process. dark side? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What else? Yeah, let's go to more questions. 
Well, Nathan Bruxton is pretty funny. He first thought we were ignoring his comments, and I read oh, his no. comments, and he said, thank you. <laughs> and now he's like, I creep on you, on you, Facebook, <laughs> Chris. <laughs> it's fine. Go ahead and creep on me. Yeah. You can read the questions. Oh. Which one one appeals to you? Uh, let's see here. Do I need to say something when I try to connect? We kind of addressed that. Um, yeah, just, hey, I love, I appreciate your work, or hey, I'm noticing you live in this space and I could really use some guidance in this area, hoping to connect. Just try and reach into that human side of yourself and, and why are you connecting with this person? Do you have a reason for connecting with the person? If you do, then just state your reason. Um, so I've got X connections, now what? Yeah, I've got X connections, now what? It's just really like, you know, more people that you have reached that LinkedIn can reach so they can sell more ads. So, you know, it helps you promote your content. So that's what, you know, I have, I have X connections. Now what? There's a better what than that. You tell me. I will. Do it. Okay. Thank you. The name, Chris, do it. <laughs> That's how it works, right? Yeah. <laughs> we haven't been live in a while. I've not been in the presence of another human being. You guys just relax a little bit. Okay. If you have a connection, just like in real life, you have an ability to reach out to that person directly. Mm -hmm. So it's important how you get it. It's important how you maintain it. And very, very important to be respectful of the person that's on the other side. So, for example, if I have a connection at Canon or Sony and I need a new camera from Canon or Sony, I will then drop something to them and I would just talk to them. Or if I connect with an author later on, I can invite them to be a guest on the show. And I think this is cool. I, I know in your profile, you can block people from mentioning you because some, some people don't like that because it pulls them into their feed and they don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But I also find that if I have a connection with somebody, if I mention them in a post and I at them, it'll mm -hmm. show up, mm -hmm. right? Versus yeah. it won't let you show up. Yeah. Yeah. So just think about it in real life. What's the importance of having somebody's phone number or their email address? Mm -hmm. Because it says they trust you enough to give you their phone number, their email address, or to connect with you on LinkedIn. Don't abuse that trust. Absolutely. So it's not just followers for followers sake. There is some meaning behind this. Yo, absolutely. And I guess um, the way I read that question too was, I have X, X amount of connections. What does that mean? I have... 500, I have 5,000. Does that mean I have more power here, more, you know? But man, so true. If you, um, if you are being welcomed into anyone's inner circle, anyone, you must treat them with respect. So um, make sure that you're being genuine in those connections. Um, what communicates, Chris, this is a good question for you, what communicates higher ability? <sighs> Whether you're employable or not. Is that your answer or a question? No, no. It, it, when they're talking about hireability, just it, whether you're employable or not. Is I that, think so. That's the like, question, You're right? a good candidate for hire. Yeah, well, first, I think you need to just be careful that you don't assume somebody, because you exist and they exist, that they want to hire anybody at all. I think it's sign, it shows a sign of poor research to assume that. And so if you connect to somebody and you're thinking they're gonna hire you and you ask for a job right away, that's not a good thing to do. I think I answered the wrong question. Hireability. Are you using LinkedIn to hire people? Am I? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You are? So Absolutely. why don't you answer that question? Sure. Then? Okay. Okay, cool. So in my opinion, I love a nice, meaty, built out profile. You see how excited I get about it? Yeah. So I I love color. Show me some color. Your your color. Show me your flavor. Um, I want to know what you've done. I would love to feel that you're proud of yourself around something. Um, I love people who have pride in themselves and other people and what they do. I'm super jazzed about people who are passionate about something. And I would love to see that something on your profile. So the last time you were looking to fill a position, you went on LinkedIn and you filled out a job thing or? When, oh, when, when yeah. I was looking? Yeah. Mm, is that I, what you meant? I think that's what they meant. How do I become I thought you employable? meant I, was I hiring? Yeah. I mean, no, last time you're hiring, like you're looking for people to fill positions. Did you go on LinkedIn and looked at, I mean, how do you recruit on LinkedIn? I'm just curious. So I don't probably have the same needs that you might, maybe. I don't know. Um, 
But so if I'm looking for creatives, they're usually in my network. We'll start there. Um, I'll, I'll see if we've had conversations before. Since things are so remote now, it, you know, distance and location seems less of a, um, less of a thing for me. Um, I love asking for people's online portfolios. Um, I love to see that they are using LinkedIn. And then once I feel comfortable, we can have a chat. You know, we can, we can schedule a call. You're not gonna just put a job posting out somewhere or ask a recruiter to find you a thousand So usually candidates. I am looking for a specific something and I know who to go to or I, I you know what I'm saying? So you're looking for a freelancer, independent contractor to come in mm -hmm. and help you. They come in and do the job and they're gone. So I think the way you're using LinkedIn is possibly like the way we were using it like 10 years ago, mm -hmm. which is you bookmark in your mind somebody who does something that you admire. And then when you have that need, you go back into your catalog of your mind and then you pull that person out, then you begin that dialogue again. Does mm -hmm. that sound about right? Yep, with the hopes that maybe I can retain them, you know, yes, as of like course. a, yeah. Yeah, so how then for, then the answer to that question is very straightforward then. You need to do something consistently showing an area of specialization. If you're a packaging person, because I know you do packaging, a packaging person, or maybe you design really beautiful sales pages and you mm -hmm. just keep putting that out over and over again, your ability or your probability of somebody like Joss who's gonna remember you when they need something is gonna go dramatically up. Mm -hmm. We have a friend, Joshua Smith. He produces these crazy vector drawings using an old school version of Illustrator Mm -hmm. And he's doing them every single day with skulls and snakes. So he's, cool. he's amazing. He's, uh, he goes by the name Hydro 74. Okay. He's been on the show. He does that so often that if I ever need a skull or a snake or somebody getting stabbed in the eye, he's my guy. <laughs> nice. Because he's so good. And he's so fast and he's so consistent. Mm -hmm. So that's what you would want to do. If we're talking about like being recruited, that's a whole nother animal. Mm -hmm. You and I probably don't need to talk about that right now. Yeah. Right. Right. Now I'll tell you how I hire. I don't hire in that conventional way. Since we're a content and education company, the most recent hires and whoever I wind up working with, they do something to stand out one eighth of an inch. They have really deep, long comments or they're offering to help me do something, but not just like, Chris, will you hire me to do something? They just do it. Mm -hmm. There's a gentleman who works for us now. His name is Alex and this is the classic example. Alex was doing show summary notes for our YouTube videos as comments. And time after time, I'm reading these things. And eventually, I think to myself, okay, you know what? I'm just going to copy Alex's show notes and put them in the actual official description of the show. And it made him really happy. He's like, wow, I can't believe you did that. And so this began a relationship. I don't know what to do with Alex. So I tell Ben, Ben, here's a smart guy. I don't know anything about him. Find him a job. Now Alex works for us. Yeah. So to me, this is the side door path where you're not even asking for anything. You're not looking for anything. You're just looking to contribute to somebody because you're, you're doing it from a place of joy and gener gener generosity and you just want to help. Yeah. And when you do that, smart people generally see it. So that's a side door technique. And caring people. Yeah. See it. And then you have this amazing powerhouse of a team of really empathetic, awesome, talented people. Yeah. So Rod has a question here. Rod is asking, how do you interact with people if they reach out and connect with you? What, what's the protocol now? So let's say there's a, like, let's say I'm really into video games and mm -hmm. Sony games reaches out to me, something for the PlayStation 5 or whatever. How do I organically have a conversation with them in case they want to hire me for something? Sure. Okay. Well, f for me, I'm just putting my sales hat on. If I've connected with someone and they're from Sony or an EA or a Blizzard, um, you know, Fortune 500 um, enterprise level company, timing is really important because these people are really busy. And usually people who I have in my head aren't necessarily living on LinkedIn all the time. So it's not like a recruiter or someone in HR that um, may be on their computer on LinkedIn all the time. So, so if they've accepted your connection, I have a tendency to, if I have a question or a need top of mind, I'll try and like respectfully hook them quickly um, just so that I can connect with them again in a second way because every time you connect with a person, it in my mind, 
someone once told me, it, it leaves a, a thread. So every time you have a touch with someone, the thread gets left and the connection is stronger and stronger and stronger. So timing has something to do with that. Um, doesn't always work, but I try. Um, and then I would usually those people who you want, like you want to work on their team, usually they don't have something right now, but sometimes they do. And I think a nice question is, um, I love what you do. I love the, the creative that your team is putting out. Um, if and when there's an opportunity for hire, I would love to be considered who might I reach out to? Um, or you could even pull a name that shows you did the due diligence, like would so-and-so from your HR be the best person for me to reach out? Um, just do all the heavy lifting up front for that person so they can even say yes or no. And sometimes they would say, um, actually, this is the person you should reach out to. So um, I just try to do all the heavy lifting up front for that person. So if they want to respond to me, they can do it quickly. Mm. Here's my short answer to this, is if somebody reaches out for to you and you recognize who it is from a company you'd like to work with, the simple response is, thank you for connecting with me. Is there anything I can do to help? That's it. Mm. There you go, again. I've gotten a job, I've gotten actually a commercial from that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Andrew T is asking this question. It's a technical question. I believe you can knock this one out of the park. He's asking, is there a difference between following a person versus connecting with them? And what is it? Oh, yeah. So um, actually, the algorithm favors connections more than follows. You, you know, you would think it might be the other way around. But um, when you connect with someone, the algorithm really um, likes to play more to connections than follows. Um, what was the second part of that question? The difference between a follower and a connection and, and what's the difference? Yeah. Um, and for me with following, quite honestly, if I'm following someone, it's because I really love the content that they're putting out. And I don't want to miss it. So you're, you're going to be receiving more of that person's content and, and sure telling the algorithm, I, I definitely want to see this feed. Um, so that's how I look at a follow and a connection. Okay. Um, I'm realizing it's almost lunchtime. I think we can do maybe five more minutes and then get out of here. Is that okay? Wow. I know you guys are really hungry for a salmon bowl. <laughs> Don't talk about food. We haven't ordered our <laughs> food. What are you kidding. doing? Why would you do that to me? Okay. Uh, what else do you want to talk about? What's relevant? What do you think? You guys answered all the questions that I saw and that I had. So. Okay. I was going to tell another mistake, but then I, my brain froze trying to read all these comments. <laughs> yeah. I mean... If I could leave, you know, one piece of homework for people, think about those three to five keywords that would, if you had to summarize yourself this year on LinkedIn, what would be three to five keywords that you would use? And I would think about the hashtags that you want to incorporate, that you want to follow. Um, and I would sprinkle those keywords into your description, into your about section, into your experiences, um, look into groups with that, you know, that might follow those similar keywords. Yeah. Okay. I remember the thing I don't want you to do. If I accept your connection, please, please don't do these couple things. One, don't say what's up. Yes. I got no time for what's up. I'm going to delete you. Don't do that. Two. Don't try to ask me the meaning of life in 14 paragraphs. I'm super annoyed by those things. Like, just realize when, when, when Josh was saying be respectful, what we're saying is be respectful of the person's time. Say what it is that you think and don't expect people to give you life career changing advice on LinkedIn or any other messaging platform. I'm like, what should I do in a situation like this with my father? I'm like, you know what? I don't know. You can't make your emergency my emergency. Just yeah. be respectful, man. We don't even have a relationship yet. Yeah, you can't expect to it. have a conversation no. on the street with someone you don't know. So why would you reach out to someone and say, what's up? It happens all the time, though. Yeah, don't ask me for money. Do not ask me to support or share your cause or whatever it is you're doing. I don't have a relationship with you. I'm not going to do it. No. Don't ask me to do that. I mean, I just have to echo that. The what's up really kills me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll give a shout out to a couple of people because we see some of our friends here. <clears throat> Nico is saying hello from Denmark. What's up? Do you speak any languages? 
Oh my gosh, don't do that to me this time. <laughs> you can say yes, English. I do speak some poorly, but okay. no. <laughs> and, and I have a person who talks to me all the time on Instagram. Her name is Aditi I, and she's from India. Hi. And she was wondering, have you abandoned us on YouTube and just have left us for Clubhouse? Because a lot of people don't have access. So do you know that LinkedIn um, com is available in 24 languages? No. There what do go. we do with that since you and I don't speak other languages? Did you know that LinkedIn, let's see here, what's another LinkedIn fact? Um, that 76% of users are outside the U.S. It's a really global community. Oh, all right. Yeah. I know what. We have a friend here from Clubhouse. She's British, I believe. Her name is Carol. And she's asking this question. You ready for it? I we'll end. So. We'll end on this one. Okay. Any tips on how to become a LinkedIn top 250 voice? Oh. Oh, yes. You know, I think that's a whole other segment. I do because that's an that's a interest of mine as well. So I, no, I feel like that's a whole other segment. How do I find out who's on a top 250 voice? Well. Another segment? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, there's a lot to say there, so I kind of yeah. want to save it. Okay. It's really a good topic. Hey, that's what we call a cliffhanger ending, and we'll end it on that. The next time. Sorry, Carol. The Sorry. next time we do this, Joss is going to share with us how to become a top 250 voice on LinkedIn. It's important to her. It's important to, to me. Yeah. And we'll talk a little bit about the dark side of LinkedIn. How's that for a cliffhanger? Okay, so on behalf of Joss, myself, and the entire team that's here, the entire two guys that are here, thanks for tuning in with us. Thank you for bearing with us as we are having some audio video sync delays. Rest assured, the synced version will be uploaded in the very near future. I just want to remind you, you're not defined by your past. The future is what you make it. Have a great day, everybody. See you later.